The intense horror of nightmare came over me. I tried to draw back my arm, but the hand clung to it, and a most melancholy voice sobbed. Let me in. Let me in. Who are you? I asked, struggling, meanwhile to disengage myself. Catherine Linton, it replied, shiveringly. Why did I think of Linton? I had read Ansha twenty times for Linton. I'm come home. I'd lost my way on the moor. As it spoke, I discerned, obscurely, a child's face looking through the window. Sound speed, marker. Sound speed, marker. My great miseries in this world have been Heathcliff's miseries, and I watched and felt each from the beginning. My great thought in living is himself. If all else perished and he remained, I should still continue to be, and all else remained and he were annihilated, the universe would turn to a mighty stranger. I should not seem a part of it. My love for Linton is like the foliage in the woods. Time will change it. I am well aware, as the winter changes the trees. My love for Heathcliff resembles the eternal rocks beneath, a source of little visible delight, but necessary. Nelly, I am Heathcliff. Sound speed marker. My walk home was lengthened by a diversion in the direction of the kirk, when beneath its walls I perceived decay had made progress, even in seven months. Many a window showed black gaps deprived of glass, and slates jut off, here and there beyond the right line of the roof, to be gradually walked off in coming autumn storms. I sought, and soon discovered the three headstones on the slope next to Moor, the middle one grey and half buried in heath. At Carlinton's only harmonized by the turf and the moss creeping up its foot, Heathcliff still bare. I lingered round them under that benign sky, 